Dobson has released their newest, largest unit, which is the 3000L, which is an upgrade from the 2000L. I was really surprised when I saw the size of the 3000L compared to the 2000L because they're almost the same size. But the 3000L has a much bigger inverter and battery and better solar input. So it clearly has to be a better unit, right? Well, to find out if it is a very good unit, I put the 3000L through 55 different points of investigation and testing so we can see if this is a good unit or not. My name is Ben and this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel and I truly appreciate you being here to see the 3000L to see if it's a good unit for you and I'm going to tell you my opinion if it's a good unit for me. To be completely upfront and transparent about the relationship between Dabson and me, they sent this out to me for an honest review. They do not get to edit my video. They do not get to tell me what I can or cannot say. They get the full review. That's what they're asking for honesty and that's what I'm giving to you here. But if you'll do me a favor and the first thing that you either really like or really dislike as I'm going through these test results, comment that down below of what you liked and or disliked about the 3000L. And if you've been to my channel before and you're not subscribed, I would appreciate it if you subscribed, it would be awesome. I'd also appreciate it if you like this video because it helps grow the channel and gets more people aware of these systems. That way they can find out if they're good or bad. The intention behind the 3000L is to have a portable system that can run essentials only or act as a UPS. Essentials are different for everybody, but for a lot of people, they are refrigerator, freezer, Wi-Fi, communication, such as cell phone charging and that sort. But it boils down to really basic loads that you would need during a power outage. This has a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Dabson advertises where it has a boost mode where it'll go up to 3600 watts of output. The inverter surge or peak is 6000 watts. It cannot do split phase power, meaning you're only gonna get 120 volt single phase power from these outlets. And you cannot join two of these together to get 240 volts for split phase power. There are three 20 amp rated outlets here that have three holes and then three that are only two holes. I personally do not like this setup because it gets too congested too quickly. But I can appreciate the fact that they tried to make a compact system and fit as many AC outlets as they could on the front. There is a 25 amp rated TT30 plug here if you wanted to plug this into an RV or have some higher output from the inverter. Debson advertises that you can get 3,600 watts out of this. I was able to get 93% efficiency out of this doing a 0.2C discharge, which means I got 2.86 kilowatt hours from the battery total. Its idle power consumption rate isn't super high, but it isn't very low. It comes in at 31 watt hours per hour. So just having it turned on, leaving the inverter running, it's gonna consume 31 watt hours per hour, which is basically 1% per hour. But when running different loads on this, I was happy to see that I had a very stable 120 volt output, regardless if I have a high load or a low load, it stayed at 120 volts clean energy out. When it's running a basic load, such as a refrigerator, the fan isn't very loud, only coming in at about 40 decibels. But when running heavy loads, it got as high as 63 decibels. So you're definitely gonna hear the fans if you're running a heavy load on it. When I ran my refrigerator off of this, I was able to get 19 whole hours without having to plug in any solar or any wall charging. It ran my fridge for that amount of time. Like most units, you can use the USB-C or the DC outputs as well as the AC outputs all at the same time. There's one USB-C 100 watt, USB-C 30 watt, and then two USB-A 15 watt. And then you have your cigarette lighter port here rated to 10 amps or 120 watts. There is one five millimeter barrel port, but I believe that's rated to about three amps. Getting onto the battery now, this has a 3,072 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery rated to 4,000 cycles to 80% efficiency. So that's a lot, but all that means is you can use this once a day for 4,000 days. And after that amount of time, call it 11 to 12 years, this will be 80% efficient compared to how it is right now. But I was really surprised to see of a middle cap unit, there's no expansion batteries for this at all. So that means there's no proprietary ones and you can't get your own external batteries to put on this either. And if you're wondering what I mean by middle cap, I have a free solar generator comparison chart that anybody can access. I'll have the link down below in the description. But that way you get a fair apples to apples comparison of this unit compared to other units of similar capacity and capability. It would be really unfair to compare this to something far more powerful because really they're just in different leagues. All for free so you can reference it yourself. This is pretty compact. It's about 19 and a half inches from front to back. It's about 10 inches wide, 
and then about 12 inches tall. It's moderately easy to move around at 57 pounds. There's no wheels on it. It does have a carrying handle. There's no telescoping handle, but it does have rubberized padded feet. In terms of charging, this is able to charge up in multiple ways and at different speeds. The AC charging is adjustable within the app all the way as low as 50 watts, all the way up to 1800 watts. And it does have a very fast UPS function at less than 15 milliseconds. But in terms of UPS power, I noticed this stopped charging the battery once my output reached about 1700 watts. That's the maximum that this will output while still charging the battery. And then in general for pass through power, meaning not charging, but still able to run things, I got up to 2600 watts and then it shut off the output. So if you're gonna leave this plugged into the wall to use as an uninterrupted power supply, make sure you're not running anything higher than 2600 watts, otherwise this is going to turn off. Not surprisingly, when this is not plugged into a wall outlet, these outlets are not grounded, which makes sense because it's not physically connected to a ground. But generally speaking, once you plug it into a wall outlet for charging, you want to see these become grounded. Normally that's what I see, but in the case of the 3000L, I actually got a ground neutral reversal indication from these outlets. According to the user manual, the fastest solar charge speed on this is 800 watts. So as I started testing charging this from solar, I first connected two of my 200 watt bifacial CalSun solar panels. These are awesome solar panels. I bought them for myself. They're not sponsored in any way. They're really good and they're really affordable. I first put two of them together in series because the maximum voltage of these panels is right about 27.3 volts. So putting two of those together in a series means that doubles my voltage, but keeps my amps the same. When I did that, I was so close to getting the full 400 watts of solar input, since that was the rating of the panels. It's rare that panels put out that much power, but I was glad to see that the 3000L was taking in that much power from them. But because the user manual says 800 watts of input, I connected two more solar panels. This is where it became a little more complicated and why I recommend the CalSun 200 watt panels is because their voltage doesn't exceed 30 volts. So when I put two of them together, I'm below that 60 volt rating while still being close to it. Because the charge parameter on the 3000L is the horrible 12 to 60 volt rating. Now it's great, it'll go up to 20 amps, but I absolutely dislike 60 volt charge controllers. They just make life more complicated because you're required to use specific panels and there's not many options in that category. But this actually wasn't even the biggest gripe that I had about the 3000L. See, on their website, it says that the max solar input is actually 1200 watts, while the user manual clearly states 800 watts. So while I was testing the quality of the customer service of Dabson, I called them to ask them about this. So I first asked them about the shelf life of how often this needs to be charged, and this is what they said. Okay, so upon checking it here, sir, the Dabson 3000L, uh, it can hold a charge for over three months before requiring a charge. Okay, so three months. Secondly, I asked about the solar. I specifically asked what the charge parameter was, and she responded giving me the total wattage, which isn't what I asked, but that's when I saw the discrepancy that the user manual and what they're saying on their website and in customer service are not the same. It supports a maximum solar input and power of 1200 watts, and this allows you to connect compatible solar panels. Perfect, that's what I needed to know. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, and by the way, one more thing asked. But let's say theoretically you could get 60 volts exactly, and you could get 20 amps exactly, watts is simply multiplying volts and amps together. Volts times amps equals watts. So when you do 60 volts times 20 amps, it's 1200 watts. So it makes sense that they're saying 1200 watts. It just doesn't make sense why in their user manual, it says something different. But even beyond that, they also don't include a solar adapter. It's an XT60 connection on the back, but I had to provide my own XT60 to MC4 adapter. It does include a wall charger and a car charger, and the car charger will go up to 100 watts of charging this while on the go. I wouldn't expect it from Dabsun or a system of this size, but it does not have dark start for either AC charging or DC charging. Dark start is when the battery drains down to zero, it keeps itself turned on, but not running anything from the outlets. But once the battery reaches a certain level, it'll turn the power back on to those outlets and continue running your loads. This won't do that. If you drain it down, you will need to turn it back on, charge it, and then turn on the inverter once again. But what we're really here for is, is this worth the price? And what are the other top three units that I would compare to the 3000L? So this comes in, 
on their website at $1,259 right now. If there's any coupons or extra discounts, I will have that in the description down below if you're looking to get the 3000L. In my comparison, I don't only compare the battery capacity to the price because that's only part of the picture. These all-in-one systems, which are called solar generators or power stations, really are the combination of an inverter, battery, and solar charge controller. So I compare all of those side by side, and then I get what I call a whole watt using all of that data. This also only has a three year warranty, but I do believe Dabson should up that to five years at least because that's becoming the new standard. So the customer service was very quick to answer my call, was very helpful and really did try to help. There's just misinformation between what's on the website, which is what I'm assuming they're looking at, and what's in the user manual. So I don't personally have any concerns of a warranty claim with Dabson. I think if there is an issue, they're gonna take care of it just due to the quality of their customer service. But there are really three main units that I think have similar specs and compare directly to the 3000L. The first is the brand new Jackery 3600 Plus. It's part of their home power line and it comes in at just under $1,200. So slightly cheaper than the 3000L. And then the second unit is actually another Jackery. It's their Home Power 3000, and that one's just above $1,100. So again, those are all very close in price. But then the third unit, which is smaller, is the Pecron 2000 LFP at only $599, less than half the price of this. So to compare these as clearly as possible, the 3600 Plus is slightly more affordable, has a 20% larger inverter at 3600 watts, has a larger battery at 3,584 watt hours, but overall the 3600 Plus definitely beats the 3000L. The Jackery Home Power 3000 is again about the same price, it's about $80 less, has a 20% larger inverter, has the exact same battery capacity, and again about 1000 watts of solar input, so comparable to the 3000L. But the Pecron 2000 LFP at only $600, less than half the price of the 3000L, only has 2000 watts of output, so 33% less than this, only has 1920 watt hours of battery, so again about 33% less than this, but has similar solar input at 1200 watts. There's not really anything that stands out about the 3000L, unfortunately. It doesn't have anything super special that nothing else does. It does have this light on the front, which actually can be helpful. I'm not huge on having lights on the fronts of my systems, but if you're out camping or doing some RVing, then it actually does come in handy quite a bit. It has a very efficient inverter at 93%, and the app is very easy to use. In the app, I can clearly see the input and the output of everything going on. I can turn on the AC output. Here's where I can do that boost, but it's not turning on. Not sure why it's not turning on. By going into the settings, it has a lot of flexibility. So for example here, I can change the charging speed. So if I'm on a circuit that is running a lot of other things and I don't wanna pop the breaker, this is a good way to reduce that charge speed. Going into energy management, I can adjust how high I want this to charge and discharge. So if you want it to last a really, really long time and increase those life cycles, drop the charge limit down to 70 or 80%. I still like to keep mine at 100%. For time management, this is a really cool way to set up schedules. So if you wanna charge this for really cheap when you have affordable electricity, then you could run, say, your refrigerator the rest of the day when electricity normally costs more. So that's a way to start getting a return on investment using the 3000L. Going into energy saving mode, I can set how fast I want the screen to turn off and the outlets to turn off if there's no power being drawn. It was very easy for me to connect the system to the app and I can control it from Wi-Fi anywhere in the world as long as this is turned on. But of course there are some cons to this unit. First of all, I don't like the 60 volt maximum solar input. That needs to be higher in my opinion. I dislike how many watts can go in from solar. I'm assuming it's actually 1200 watts because that makes sense with the volts and amps. But that just means they need to correct it in the user manual. Using this as a UPS, I don't like the fan noise. About every five minutes or so, the fans will turn on and it's not very loud. It's just a quiet hum that I can hear. So while I tried using this in my bedroom to run basic things at night to see what it was like to sleep next to it, I could hear the fans constantly turning on and off and I didn't like that. And I think one of the clearest indicators is that unfortunately on the solar generator comparison chart, which again is linked in the description down below, completely free for you to use, this did not make it into the top five recommended units. Obviously I would have loved for it to be into the top three, but the specs are the specs and the results are the results. This is just how it turned out and it did not make the cut. So my question to you is in this video, what did you like and what did you dislike and comment that down below. Additionally, if you've had experience with Dabsun and their products, we really, really need that information down below so that way other people can hear your experience, whether it's positive or negative. And lastly, would you buy this? And if not, what would you buy instead? It's always helpful if you can explain why that 
that way people have some reasoning behind what you're saying, but it's completely up to you. Just comment down below your opinion on those questions. And if you found this review helpful, I think you'll also find this one helpful. So make sure to check this one out. And if you want help finding a system that's gonna be the right fit for you, whether it's home backup power, a cabin, RV, van life, or just mobile power, then email me to info at minutemansolar.com and I'd be happy to help you. Now go watch this video. I'll see you in the next one.